What's going on workforce? Brian here and welcome to our Stormblood getting ready for Shadowbringers gear progression guide. In this guide we're going to be breaking down where you get all the gear starting from 290 all the way up to 404. So there's a lot that we want to cover here. There's a lot of content that you need to do and obviously the question of Eureka is going to come up naturally as a part of this. So with this, like I said, we're gonna start with 290 and we're gonna talk about how you get your hunts, Delta Scape, all of the stuff for the gear, both for the tomes, as well as what you get for drops from the various trials and more. Now, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or tips of your own, be sure to leave them in the comments below and let's have that conversation and help each other out. Now, hopefully we're going to be able to give you all the information. And if you're already in Shadowbringers, if you're watching this after the fact, note that you can replace pretty much the tomes that I'm talking about with Poetics. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in and talk about your gear. So here we are in the Reach, and for the most part, you can do this or Kugane to kind of find these vendors and things like that. Obviously, your gear progression starts with your job quest, which is going to award you 290 gear. As a part of that, though, as a part of Eureka, you're going to need to have this gear available. So if you end up getting rid of it, do not worry. Just go talk to a Calamity Scavenger to be able to acquire your 290 gear for your job again. So that being said, from 290, where do you go? All right, so to get started, there's a little bit of jumping around that we need to do. So I wanna to try to break it up based off of where you can get the gear based off of the various vendors and kind of grouping them there for you. We can talk about how this all gets weaved in together here later in the video. I tried to do that first and it just seems so broken up and confusing. So we're gonna start with your hunts. So your hunts and your hunt vendor here uh, in Rogers Reach is right here, I'm talking to the wrong one and you can go into your various exchanges here. So you have your Alminga gear. This is your 310 gear. So coming from your 290 and then going into your 300 and 310s, this is where you can find your upgraded weapons, your upgraded armor, uh, and all that using obviously the Centrino seals as your currency here for that. This vendor also applies level 330 eye level gear, and you can see your weapons for 330, as well as your armor pieces here as well. So your hunt board, which is going to reward you with obviously these seals that you need to get these items uh, is obviously here and also in Kugane as well. So you'll be able to do that. And, and for the most part, pretty much up to 330, this is what's gonna feed you that. There is the ability to also upgrade your 330 gear uh, to 340, but we'll talk about that here in a minute. So that's one piece of the puzzle, but let's talk about what duty finder uh, and uh, dungeons are gonna give you. So Kugane Castle and Temple of the Fist are gonna be eye level 300 gear. So if you just got 290, these are what you're gonna to run to be able to actually get the step between your 290 and your 310 and what we saw on the hunt board. So that's gonna help feed you there. Now, once you go into the Drowned City of Scala here, you're gonna see this at 315. Now you do wanna to check to see what your average item level is because not all of this is gonna be accessible to you right from the front. So to start, Skiddy Escala, you need an item level of 300 to be able to enter this forthright. So you're going to end up probably doing Temple of the Fist and Kugane Castle to help fill that in. Now, as you're getting the tomes, which will be Mendacity and Genesis, as you can see here for the reward right now, that's going to be able to feed you way better gear at 360 and 390. But we'll talk about that here in a bit. So you won't be stuck here on these two dungeons for long. Hell's Lid drops 325 gear and you need an average item level of 310 to be able to enter into this dungeon as well as the fractal continuum hard also dropping 325 gear as well so again both of those require 310 to be able to enter into it the swallow's compass is a little bit different it's on its own and it's going to have gear level at 345 and you're going to have to have 330 to be able to run this dungeon then we're gonna go into the Burn and St. Mokum's Arboretum, can't say Mokines, <laughs> and we're gonna see you need 340 to get in, but for these two dungeons, it's gonna drop level 355 gear accordingly. And then finally, the Gimlet Dark, which is 375, and you need at least 360 to be able to go into the Gimlet Dark. And that's gonna be how you can also kind of fill in some of the holes between your tomes and between all of them. Now, when we talk about tomes, I do want to make a quick mention of them here. So under your currency tab, under battle, you can kind of see what you have available. Creation is going away and we have Mendacity and we have Genesis. Now, Genesis, currently you're going to be capped at 450. However, typically one month to a month and a half before Shadowbringers drops, this weekly lockout is going to be removed, thus allowing you to farm up as much Genesis as you want to be able to catch up as quickly as possible. Now, if you're watching this after Shadowbringers drops to the world, you're going to see that these items as a part of this is going to be switching back to Poetics, which tends to be kind of the legacy currency for 
50, 460, and eventually here for 70. But beyond that, you have a weekly cap of 450, and this gear is going to get you the 390 gear. This is very critical to your, you know, just to gearing up quickly. So we've covered the dungeons, what they drop. They're also going to be feeding you these tomes, thus allowing you to uh, purchase gear and obviously advance your eye level pretty quickly. And once that gear and weekly lockout is removed, you're going to be able to fly through it. So let's go take a look at our tombstone gear right now. And then we're going to jump into the raid scene and talk about that. Talking to Ina, you can see here the tombstone exchange. You'll see creation and you're not getting creation. So you're going to have to go use the hunt to be able to acquire these 330 gear. So just for some reason, it's still in at the time of this recording. We'll probably see that removed very quickly. Then you can see mendacity. And this is where you can see your 360 gear. All of this gear is upgradable through the 24 man raid tokens, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. But if you're wondering where you get your 360 gear, this is where it's going to be. Finally, you have Genesis. In this case, you can see your 390 gear. This is upgradable to 400 gear as well using the raid scenes tokens. And again, like I said, we'll talk about that just in a minute. So if you're trying to figure out how to get that gear and how to get that step up, just make sure you're constantly farming those tomes. You can do that through the dungeons. You can do that through the raids. You can do that through trials. You can do that through PVP and you can do that through Eureka. Everything in this game is going to be feeding you these tomes. And once the weekly lockout is done, you should be able to actually really dramatically catch up. The reason why you want to know that is if you look at your headpiece, your body piece, your hand piece, your belt, and your legs and your feet, just those alone, you can see how much, how many tomes you need total to be able to acquire all the gear. Same thing applies for your accessories, even though they're much cheaper at 375. So at the time of this recording, it's going to take you 3,510 just for your left side alone. That's gonna be at the 450 cap, around 7.8 weeks of making sure you hit that total. Now, at the time of this recording, there's at least 20 weeks until the release of Shadowbringer. So just keep that in mind, pace yourself accordingly. Now, if you're gonna go in and add accessories to all this, that's gonna take a little bit more time, but you can usually weave in accessories from other content, especially the raids, which can help give you a step up and allow you to focus in on one side or the other. So pro tip, pick a side, focus in on it, uh, because essentially you also need tomes to be able to upgrade your weapon as well. And we'll talk about that here in a second. Okay, so now let's talk about the raid scene and what you're gonna get from all of this content here. So you can see Alpha Sape, Sigma Sape, and Delta Scape. So first with the Delta Scape, you're gonna see 320 gear drop from this. There is no weekly lockout anymore. For Sigma Scape, you're gonna see 350 gear. And finally for Alpha Scape, you're going to see 380 gear. There is an equivalent savage of each one of these and these savages are going to drop gear accordingly where you see originally with 320, now you're gonna see 340. Then with originally with 350, then you're gonna see 370. And then finally with the last version of it, you're going to see it at 400 with the weapon being at 405. So that's how you get the gear and that's how you could weave in the various raids to be able to fill in the gaps accordingly from your tomes and more. So from that perspective, as soon as you can get these unlocked, you need to go into it. So from the Delta Scape, the different eye levels are going to range dramatically. It starts at 295, so you can get started with that pretty easily. And then as it scales up from the Sigma Scape, you're gonna jump into 325. And then finally in the Alpha Scape, 355, 355, and more. Now for the Savage versions, they have higher level item requirements. So just keep that in mind if you wanna form a pre-made and try to go in and tackle this content before Shadowbringers drops. Then we also have the various 24 man raids. The first, the Royal City Ravenastar is gonna drop item level 330 gear. There is no weekly lockout on this at this moment. Then the Lighthouse is gonna drop 360 gear. And finally, the Monastery is gonna drop 390 gear. The gear that drops from this content is not upgradable with the tomes, but each time you run it, right now on the Monastery, there is a weekly lockout, but that will be removed but prior to Shadowbringers dropping. You can get an item. Now your coins, to be able to upgrade a 390 to 400, you're gonna need a coin from Rabinestar, from Lighthouse and Monastery. Uh, you're gonna need all one of each to be able to do that. And I'll show you where that happens right now. Now, if you go to the token exchange, you can find the Wanderous Sundries. 
These are the items that are required to be able to upgrade your weapon, to upgrade one left side and your right side. And you can see here, it requires one of each. The other thing you can actually use is your hunt logs to be able to go and use these books to be able to purchase the items themselves. And you can see here, maybe that's gonna be more to your liking, however you wanna go about it. Uh, sometimes running uh, each of these every week or more, you're gonna find yourself either with a surplus of coins or not enough to be able to do it really quickly. Once the weekly lockout is removed on the final coin, you're gonna see that it's gonna be much easier to accomplish at that time. So from there, previous upgrades, you can see that they require just two of the coins. And finally, the first upgrade to go to 340 just requires the one coin. You can see that all done here. Getting those items in, you can obviously run down to the gear exchange right here. And this is where you can actually use it to upgrade your gear accordingly. So you need the weapon and you need the solvent in this case for the weapon and then the twine uh, for any kind of headpiece in this. And it kind of, you have, you see the different items here. So kind of take a look and kind of attack what you feel is the best way to upgrade your items accordingly, where <laughs> they all require something different. In that case, twines and the shellacs. <laughs> I'm gonna say that, I probably butchered his name. So I do apologize. All right, so we've talked about uh, your tomes. We talked about the dungeon gear. We talked about the raid gear. We've talked about a lot of gear. What's going on with the weapons? Weapons can be acquired from heaven on high at 365. You got to run that content quite a bit, but it is a good weapon to be able to kind of use, especially if you're doing something on, on an alternate job, you want to have more than one job upgraded. The other thing you want to be aware of is under your duty finder. And then if you go into your trials, you have your extremes as well as you have the high end, which you have the various trials here as well. This is going to reward you with various weapons that you want to pay attention to. So let's go ahead and break down the weapons for itself. So the pool of tribute and examination, these are gonna be item level 320 weapons for you. So if you're looking for a 320 weapon or a glamor, that's where you wanna go. Shinru's domain, this is going to drop 335 weapon or a 335 weapon, or obviously the tokens to use to be able to exchange those for the weapon itself. Jade Stoa is gonna be at 355 for your weapon itself. For Tsukiyomi's pain, you're gonna see this at 365. Then Hell's Kerr, you're going to see this at 385. And then going into the high-end duties, you can see the Wreath of Snakes. This is going to be 395. These are weapons that you can use to acquire between obviously working on your weapons themselves. There's also a way you can go out right now and buy a, a high quality or a, a crafted weapon. And the system's going to allow you to upgrade that as well. Not to the highest level being 400, 405, depending on where you fall and what kind of weapon you're seeking. But let me go and show you where you can use and where you can go to upgrade your crafted weapons now. So still in the reach, you can talk to Jen Dehada. <laughs> And you can see you can earn resistant tokens and Rashaka tokens. So resistant tokens, high quality, you can actually exchange the, the item itself and you're going to get a lot of these tokens. And you can see that listed here and what you're going to get for it. So if I exchange this item, I'm going to get 15 resistance tokens for the uh, Rashada tokens. I can change in the, the weapon here and I can get in this case 27 there. Now why you would do this is that if you go to use the tokens, you can actually use this to upgrade your weapon, your item here to a 390 high quality as well. And it tells you how many tokens you need. So turning in the high quality weapon itself, along with this Rudaku's, these are gonna be what actually gives you the higher version of the weapon itself. So just keep that in mind of where you can go and you can acquire that as part as any kind of step along with you know your trials or whatever. So if you have the, the, the money, the gill, you can go buy a step up and then you can come in and work to upgrade it even further. And it still acts as a pretty decent weapon even though obviously the best weapons are gonna come from Savage and from Eureka. And finally, we have Eureka. This is a place where you wanna be able to upgrade your 290 gear up to actually 350, depending on how you go about it. There's weapons and gear. For the first parts, that's where gear ends up coming into play. And this is where by playing the content, you're going to get these crystals, which are going to allow you to upgrade your weapon and your gear accordingly. And there's actually various steps here from 335 to 340 to, <laughs> to 345 accordingly. Now, when you go from Pagos, Pyros, and then Hydros, you can actually see your weapons leveling up even further from a 370 to Pyros 385, and finally Hydros at a 400, 405 for the hardest level content. So you can actually use Eureka as a leveling progression for your weapons as well. And this is different content. It's actually been, you know, within the community device of content. So if you're not used to that, what is offered, it might not necessarily be in your best interest. But like I said, this is also gonna reward you tomes for doing various NMs. It's a different kind of challenge. It's a different kind of pace. And so if you're looking for something different, that's the place to go. 
and check out. So we talked about our job quest, the hunts, the raids, all the dungeons, the coins and upgrades, our various weapons that you can get from Eureka and obviously from the trials. There's a lot of gear here. And so at that point, and this where I guess I come in from an advice perspective is that figure out what you want before Shadowbringers. As this kind of goes forward, as you're preparing for Shadowbringers, or even if you're trying to go back and hunt for this gear, hopefully this has been a help. But if you're preparing, kind of figure out what you want. Again, you're gonna be capped at 450 tomes a week right now, and eventually that's going to be removed, and thus it's gonna be a little bit easier. But however, at the end of the day, just be sure to kind of build in some breaks and kind of try to set some goals for yourself. So that way, by the time Shadowbringers drops, you're not completely burned out. I think that's the best advice that I can give. Hopefully, guys, like I said, this guide has been a help. Hopefully, if, um, you're gonna go find the gear that you need <laughs> and fill in the gaps accordingly based off of the content and how you acquire it. So without further ado, my name is Brian. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you have a fantastic day and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Hey, it's me. It's been a while since I talked to you guys directly like this way, but don't tell anybody. We've got even more epic content planned for this channel. The response has been incredible. We hope to see you. If you're new, hit subscribe, leave us a comment. I'd like to talk to you more about video games. I can't seem to speak my language. <laughs> All right.